So I had a question about wondering what's the difference essentially between dipole-dipole type forces and dispersion type forces uh, when we're talking about intermolecular interactions. And so really to think about what the difference between those kinds of forces are, or, or if we imagine a, a water molecule for example, and we talked about in class the fact that because each of these bonds is what you would call a polar bond, and most of the electron density would be up near the oxygen atom, and you wouldn't have much at all down near the hydrogen atoms, what we end up getting is what's called a dipole moment. And so we get basically an uneven sharing of electrons in this entire molecule, and what you get is an end of the molecule that's predominantly negatively charged, and an end of the molecule that's predominantly positively charged. And so this will really go through a solution um, almost acting like little magnets and attracting other molecules that also have a dipole. So for example, if there are other water molecules in the solution, you can easily imagine that they would preferentially orient themselves in such a way that the negative end of the adjacent molecule lines up with the positive end of the molecule that it's next to. And so there is really a force of attraction here between the negative end of this molecule and the positive end of this other one because opposite uh, charges attract. And so this kind of attraction that I'm indicating here would be referred to as a dipole-dipole type of attraction. Now in this particular case, because I've chosen the water molecule uh, to demonstrate this, this is uh, extra strong. This is We would refer to these as hydrogen bonds uh, because they adhere to the criteria where we've got an oxygen atom bonded to a hydrogen uh, directly interacting with another oxygen atom. So those are the rules for hydrogen bonding. But hydrogen bonding could be thought of as really just a special case of dipole-dipole type interaction. So this is what's going on there. Now, there's other cases, though. Um, if we think of something like the helium atom, for example, the helium atom is uh, very nonpolar. There isn't uh, necessarily uh, an uneven charge distribution in the helium atom, so I can't really point to a negative side of the helium atom and a positive side of the helium atom. And so if I have helium atoms uh, in, adjacent to each other in some sort of a chemical system, like, like maybe a helium balloon, we wouldn't really expect much of an interaction between these helium atoms. And that's true. There isn't much of an interaction. It's why they're a gas. Um, however, you know, it's not necessarily fair to say that there is no interaction whatsoever. And we have this type of interaction called dispersion, which we say exists between all chemical species, obviously to varying degrees, but it does exist. And what dispersion is, dispersion is, is essentially what you would call interactions between not dipoles, like I've indicated over here on the left, but something called an instantaneous dipole. So in that circumstance, if you can imagine the electrons really whizzing around this, this helium nucleus, and although I can only indicate one with my pointer here, imagine that there were a pair of electrons, as helium would of course have, and the logic is that at some point in time, and really at any given point in time, there is a certain probability that uh, just due to chance, just due to probability, the electrons will somehow be unevenly distributed you know, all on one side or predominantly on one side of this chemical species. Now that is a very short-lived type of uh, situation. It's gone just as quickly as it came, but nonetheless, at some instant in time, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can imagine that just based on statistical chance, the electrons will somehow be unevenly distributed. And as soon as that happens, then we have what's called an instantaneous dipole in the helium atom, or in any chemical system for that matter. And that instantaneous dipole, that dipole moment that only exists for a brief instant, will actually help induce an instantaneous dipole in neighboring molecules. So if my electronic distribution on average is, is uh, distributed quite symmetrically around this helium atom, and all of a sudden this helium atom next to it has some sort of asymmetry in its electronic distribution, distribution, that will induce this next helium atom to also have a similar asymmetry. And there will be a small but significant favorable interaction between these two systems because of that. So dipole-dipole interaction is really sort of a, a permanent type thing, and a dispersion force is essentially a dipole-dipole interaction, but it's a, what we call an instantaneous dipole interaction. So it's gone just as quickly as it came, but the important part is that it was there in the first place. 
So that's really the difference between dipole-dipole and dispersion forces. Generally, we think of dispersion as being weaker because it is so short-lived, and we think of dipole-dipole interactions as being stronger because they are essentially permanent. But the thing about dispersion forces is that they're always there. Even in cases like this helium dimer here where we would expect no interaction whatsoever, there is some interaction, and we attribute that to what we call dispersion. Now, dispersion, it should be pointed out, also exists in all chemical things. So even if I look over here in these, these two water molecules, I know that they're interacting based on uh, this dipole-type interaction, but there's also dispersion. Dispersion, um, it, it, you know, adds to that. So, you know, the sum of all of the attractive forces between these these molecules, it does come from dipole-dipole, but also from dispersion. So dispersion is, is everywhere. We, we see dispersion, you know, dispersion interactions between all pairs and all uh, all sets of, uh, of chemical species. Um, but there are some chemical species where dispersion is the only option they have. So I hope that helps, and keep the questions coming.